Hey guys, and welcome back to another edition of RotarySwing.com's Injury Prevention Series. Today we're gonna to be discussing the topic of the elbow. Now I know a lot of golfers struggle with some of that elbow pain, and we're gonna be talking about what some of the causes may be to that problem alone. And more importantly, we're gonna teach you how to correct it so you never have to feel elbow pain ever again. Last week we discussed how to avoid back pain. In this video series, we're gonna be going through some of the critical joints in the golf swing. So if you've been battling with elbow pain or you wanna just prevent it in general, you want to pay close attention to today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay everyone, I know exactly how frustrating it can be to leave the golf course or leave the driving range and get home and start to feel some of that elbow pain. It's also frustrating when we're constantly looking for answers and a solution as to why this is happening and we really can't get it. Well that's exactly what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be defining why this is happening in your golf swing. And more importantly, we're gonna be able to correct it with a simple drill at the end that's gonna give you no pain and more control. I know control is a big thing for a lot of us golfers so, because control leads to consistency. So here's what I want you to do, is I want you to think of it this way. We're gonna be focusing primarily on the lead arm in your golf swing because that's where we see about 90 to 95% of the people that visit us um, that have had some previous instruction or previous issues with their golf game. They've, it's really focused in their lead arm. That's where it gets most of the stress. So I'm a right-handed player. So we're gonna focus on the left arm here. So what you're gonna see here, I've flexed my arm to about 90 degrees or so, and I've got my palm facing my face. And you can do this at home if you want. Go ahead and just let your arm extend out. Now, why does my arm not extend past this point? Well, our body has got built-in safety mechanisms. It doesn't want us to go any further than that. It's got built-in safety mechanisms all over the place. It's just a matter of how we use them. Can my arm extend further past this? Absolutely. If it happened, it would be extremely painful. We see a lot of professional athletes that play contact sports actually hyperextend their arm and they're sitting on the sideline for months and months and months. It's a very painful process. You're probably wondering at home, okay, so how does that relate to my golf swing? Well, I'll get there in just a second. I want you to also think about what the left arm is doing in the golf swing at all times, okay? The left arm is rotating in the golf swing. No matter what you hear on TV from a lot of these talking bobbleheads, the golf club is always rotating, okay? I've, we've heard it before, this golf club, this person holds a golf club square to the target longer than anybody out there. That's absolutely a farce. The golf club is always rotating. It's designed to rotate. For a stock shot format, a, t a tour player is typically rotating the, the toe of the golf club six to eight miles an hour faster than the center of the club. That's a lot of speed. Six to eight miles an hour faster, this guy's rotating through the hitting area. It's just rotating at a constant rate. Generally speaking, it's been measured right around 300 to 400 degrees per second where amateur golfers tend to rotate the golf club at an excessive rate between 800 and 1500 degrees per second. That's quite a bit, right? You can see that's a drastic upturn. So how does that cause the pain though? How do those two things together cause the pain? Well, let's take a look at that very closely. So I'm gonna to turn for the side view here so you guys can really, really watch. And I'm gonna to try to get my arm to rotate very quickly so I can mirror what 800 to 1500 degrees per second looks like. Grab the club here. So I'm gonna go through the hitting area and I'm gonna rotate that club very quickly. And I want you to just pay attention to the movement of my arm here, okay? You see how my arm, from my shoulder down to my wrist, is rotating as one unit all the way down and it's rotating the club very quickly. Why is that a problem? Well, let's look at it very objectively here. If I were to rotate my arm from my shoulder down all the way down into the hitting area and my elbow starts to internally rotate towards my body, You'd see that my wrist is now supinating here. Okay, my elbow starts to rotate in towards my body. Why is this bad? Well, if I strike the golf ball with my elbow now moved into this position, the force, the impact itself, is gonna start moving my arm into that, that hyperextended position. If I impact the golf ball, you can see that that's, that's the direction it wants to go. That's where a lot of the pain and discomfort comes from, believe it or not, is because you are rotating the arm as one unit all the way down in your golf swing getting the club face to rotate very excessively. Where tour players, if you watch their golf swings, their elbow position is now facing more down the target line. Okay, it's down the target line, because why? Well, here's the good news. We can rotate this guy, okay, with our wrist and our forearm. We don't have to have the entire arm rotating. We can rotate it with our wrist and our forearm based off the distal radial ulnar joint. So if I were to keep my elbow moving down in front of me here, I can rotate my wrist. Okay, that's exactly how tour players control the club face so well and avoid elbow injuries. So 
how does this, how do we fix it? Well, that's a good, that's a good question because that's what we're here for is we want to drill. Now let me show you exactly a little bit more on top of that. When the elbow position is down at the target line and I impact the golf ball, okay, I'm starting to feel the force here. What is my arm going to do if my elbow is down the target line? Well, my arm would move in this direction, okay? This is obviously an exaggerated form. We wouldn't see a lot of anybody break their arm like that. But I want you just to see if my elbow is down the target line and I impact this golf ball, my arm is going to move this way. Well, you and I could probably sit here all day and do this movement and never really feel any pain or discomfort. Where the other way, you're going to start to move the arm in the direction it doesn't want to go, where that safety mechanism is saying, uh-uh, no way. So now, as far as a drill is concerned, this is a good one for you guys at home that have really battled with this. So I want you to just go ahead and set up, okay? You can set up with about 80% of your weight on your left foot, head in behind the golf ball. I want you to just go ahead and start without a club. You're going to swing your arm out here to about 9 o'clock, okay? So my glove logo or my watch is facing back at you at home. And what I want you to do is I want you to slowly pull your elbow down the target line. Very relaxed. You don't need to yank it down there. Just pull very lightly, and I want you to rotate your wrist, keeping your elbow facing down the target line as long as possible. And I want you to stop at impact. So elbow down the target line, rotate the wrist. So when you get into the hitting area or at impact here, I want your elbow facing down the target line. I want your watch, your glove logo, facing down the target line as well. Okay, so you can see here my wrist is slightly bowed. This would be flat. Bowing of the wrist just de-lofts the club. Okay, I want you to do about 100 to 300 reps without a golf club. Then your next practice session, I want you to start out the same way. So aim, if you're going to do 300 reps, your first 150 reps need to be done without a club. Then for those of you players that have an impact bag, this is a great drill for you. Start to put the club in there. You're going to set up the same way. And then as your arm starts to move or your elbow starts to move down in front of you, keep it down the target line and let the wrist rotate and have those same checkpoints. Once you do enough reps of this into the impact bag, then slowly start to add some weight shift to it. Slowly start to add some more width, some more rotation and repeat the process. Still continue to hit the impact bag. Don't work on pulling your arms down the hitting area, just let your arm kind of fall and release. Keeping the elbow position down the target line, you'll see that this is number one, you're gonna alleviate a lot of the elbow pain. Number two, you're gonna see that we can start to square the club face up with our wrist, and now you're gonna have more control. Then after you've completed that process with the impact bag, then slowly start working on your release, and you're gonna see that you will never have elbow pain ever again, and you've got more control of your club face you're hitting more greens, which is way more fun and way more exciting. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in to another edition of the Injury Prevention Series here at RotarySwing.com. I'm your instructor, Chris Tyler. And remember, if you missed last week's video on how to prevent back pain, that, uh, there's going to be a link in the description below. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those up. We'll help you out as best we can. We're all here to learn, and that's a great way for us to keep it social so other golfers around the world can learn as well. Also, do me a favor and click that like button down there for me below. And also, subscribe to our channel right here on this little button on my hand. And that'll allow you to get updates anytime we send out any of our new video content. Now we've got some more videos coming out with this series and I hope you guys stick around. We've got another video coming out next week that's going to be talking about your hip or your knee. And that's another common area that we see with a lot of golfers putting a lot of stress on. So let's get out there. Let's play injury free in 2016. Let's make it a great day. The brain learns. But to what we're going to talk about today can actually make an instant impact on your ball striking. That doesn't mean you're going to go out and do it perfectly every time. That's where the repetition comes in and the practice, but what you are going to find is that for once you're going to start to really understand what controls uh, the ball flight. And when we talk about, about ball flight, there are a couple things that we're specifically dealing with. One is trajectory. And